right, guys, what up, what up? Welcome to the wheelhouse. So I've been doing a lot of uh, editing type videos and, you know, sticking to one particular topic. However, I usually do go through technical analysis on different things. I wanted to go through the indexes. Um, technical analysis is my strength and forte. However, um, I'll just tell you that a lot of the stuff that I'm looking at uh, as I prepared for this video kind of looks a little similar um, to how it has been a week or so ago. Uh, there is some rejections. There is definitely like right here on the Dow. I mean, this is a major trend reversal. Yeah, we got out of the primary downtrend and we even retested it. But I had mentioned uh, we need to break this and we did and got rejected and we still have the blue ribbon and the green lights, the Jedi green lights, and we are above the 200 and out of the primary downtrend, which signifies confirmed uptrend in bull run. However, um, we do have to get past this. This is a major trend reversal because of this peak and this previous pivot high over here. So yeah, you could just feel the tentativeness, um, you know, I my hodl went way up last week and last couple of days I've noticed it's gone down. Not too worried about it. You know, the best thing I can say is make sure you have a cushion, make sure your bills are paid so you're not stressed about that. And then the stuff that you have in your hodl should be high conviction and you should use the fear to your advantage to try to get better deals. Now, I did all my buying right here on this line. Okay, so I'm not really trying to buy up here on stuff so if it wants to come down you know I, i'm not trying to buy until it comes down lower so you know i'm okay with what i own and what's going on and i'm prepared for a long journey on a hodl because it is um subject or you know mercy to the market's movements if you will that's just normal i have realistic expectations i bought the double bottom bounce um, you know, for my Dow stocks, spy stocks, tech stocks, and whatnot, we'll go through the indexes and crypto. We'll do a good uh, TA video, <clears throat> but I want to go through a lot of TA, so we'll try to move kind of quick. I'm not going to do a bunch of fancy editing and spend three days on this video like I have in the last four videos. Um, if you haven't seen those on FTX, Sam Bankman Freed, Elon, Twitter Coin. Um, you know, all that stuff, check it out. Today, I want to keep it uh, old school, if you will, and, and with what I normally do, which is TA. So let's just take a look now. Um, this is the Dow. We'll start on the Dow. <clears throat> and let's grab uh, this tool over here for a price range. And let's go over to our all-time high. Now, we went as low as it looks like we went as low as 22.54% down on the Dow. And we're currently over on this purple line, which is only 8.65% down from its all-time high. Okay, now what you got to know is when the June bottom low happened here, that was, follow the line, June bottom low. And that was the peak of COVID, okay? Before COVID, and here's the money printing and uh, the V-shaped recovery. And then when it double bottomed over here, okay, it double bottomed, you follow this yellow line over. And what that is, <clears throat> is that is a uh, another peak inside of this big base of COVID. However, the main peak is up here on the blue line. Now, we bought here, we knew it was gonna happen. We bought there, everybody in the Discord, and we should be sitting pretty on most stuff except our crypto, which nobody could see the FTX thing coming, um, unfortunately. We did buy good, and we do have very low prices. Um, so we got a lot of coins and good averages. But I certainly will buy more and have more dry powder for stocks and crypto. But again, you know, I want to buy either the breakouts that hold, okay, like a breakout off this line that holds, or these low double bottom bounces, okay? That's just prudent when you're investing. Uh, trading's a different story. You wanna use the fear to your advantage, okay? You wanna identify the pivot, use the fear and that momentum to the long side or the short side uh, to your favor and you know make money doing that. Trading's a different story. Best to uh, trade within the tighter ranges on the smaller time frames, using the fear and the catalyst to your advantage, which we can go over, we have in many videos, but you essentially take it down to like a 
one hour or a five minute, or even if you wanted to scalp real fast on the one minute, you could do that with, with momentum. So as far as the Dow, we're only down 8.65% from its all time high. Okay, we shouldn't be freaking out. However, when I look at this, with this yellow line right here, this essentially is turning into a double top and sideways action in a macro effect. Typically, we see this every single month, okay? Um, people rally, the markets rally, money gets put in, it goes risk on after the CPI data and Jerome Powell speaks, and then people get in, they get their money, they trade, they expand the volume, and then you know a news piece and the narrative changes in the media and everybody gets worried and they start to pull out, hopefully not panic sell or sell at a loss, that's just ridiculous because again, like I said at the beginning, if you're buying for the HODL, you should be buying these double bottom bounces and be buying into, you know, not just technically driven, but fundamentally driven and for the long hold. Go watch that video, four best stocks to buy. Each of those are in different industry groups and they're leaders of their groups and will be for many, many years to, to follow. And so you should be able to sleep well at night uh, with those four stocks. Um, so yeah, I mean, the Dow is certainly rejecting, it looks like, off of this major uh, breakout or you call it a resistance or, you know, I mean, you know, this is, um, this would actually give us a, a real trend reversal if we pass this. We got the double bottom. We got a minor trend reversal. That was one, two, three, four. Huge. Got, <clears throat> got above the 200. Huge. Got the Jedi green lights. Huge. Broke out of the primary downtrend that we've been in since the peak. That's huge. But like in all the stock and TA videos, I said, we really got to get through this one because these are minors. Okay. And this is a major. And getting through this is really, really important. We It's looking like it's turning into a double top and a rejection, which is not good. Now, will it reject down here right around the 13th when the CPI data comes out and then bounce? We don't know. We'll, we'll have to take it day by day and play by play. But, <clears throat> you know, we're not nearly as far down as we were. And if you guys did buy in here, you, you're not feeling too bad. And especially if you have cushion, your bills are paid and you don't have everything in and you know you're worried about that and you're just doing the nibble effect like i always talk about um you, you get in here and then you know as you get breakouts and things move forward you can you know scale in and buy more now <clears throat> i want to just say something to everybody um i want you guys to think about it like this the length of time that it has taken for us to come down okay, is probably the length of time it will take to go back up. And in the end, from this yellow line of all time high, what's essentially happening is you're building a huge base. And when you actually break out from that, you start the next bull run. If you go look at the chart on the Dow from 2007 through 2013, it did the same thing. However, it bottomed in 2009, a year and a half after. Similarly, what might be happening here where it bottoms, and it's gonna be shaky. It's gonna be shaky for a while, but those that were smart bought the bottom in 2009, even though we were in a recession, okay, and didn't break out until 2013, past all time high, they still captured three additional years of gains by identifying the bottom and the pivot. And so being out of this primary downtrend, okay, is really, really bullish. And it is my belief that if we do get one more read on the CPI data, December 13, that ticks down on headline and core supply and demand, well, smart money is forward looking like the Dow theory. And, you know, these guys, institutions, pensions, you know, insurance funds, hedge funds, they're itching to get their money in and they will have a long time horizon and be forward looking. However, we do need some consistency and to see two reads come down on CPI will be quite bullish for the market. So until then, this might reject, bounce up the primary and then go. But if that, in, if that inflation report is not good, well, you know, the worst thing that could happen is we come back down into this primary downtrend and then that's, we're gonna have to have a whole new conversation and go back to my original theory where I thought we would bounce up and down in this until about September of 2023. Um, so that was what I thought would be happening, but we broke out 
and we'll just have to see what happens. Um, hopefully it's just a retest and a bounce and a breakout and that CPI looks good. And then imagine you're in a tunnel, okay? And you've been going for a year and a half on this journey through this tunnel and then you're in the darkest part of the tunnel or you're on a ship, okay, in the middle of the sea and you've already been through the hurricane and the, the tornado and the storm and, and you're just now 50% of the way through the tunnel or 50% of your journey in the sea on the way home, but you didn't die, you survived, you didn't drown, okay? You still got batteries in your flashlight if you were in the tunnel, and you know, it's gonna take as much time to come back as it did to come down. That's called the magic T theory, and it just works out that way, but you wanna identify the bottoms, and like I said in 2008, most retail is gone. Even though it didn't break out till 2013, Smart Money bought in 2009 and they got those extra few years and then went on for another eight or nine years, okay, until 2021. So keep all that in mind. Don't be scared. And if, if the media changes the narrative and the fear comes in, that's great for trading. We love the fear. We love the momentum. That's We are momentum-based pivot-to-pivot directional traders at the wheelhouse. So we have a Discord if you want to learn more. The link is in the description. So that's what's going on with the Dow. We kind of have this double top projection going on. We have bullish signs. We have bearish signs. Uh, basically, that's indecision, okay? Or we need more data to confirm a direction. Um, but just know that even in a bull run, there's going to be down days, okay? And just like in a bear run, there's going to be up days, okay? There's just going to be more down than up in a primary downtrend. But since we're out... I'm assuming there's going to be more up than down outside of the primary downtrend since we're on the outside of it, okay? Now, uh, we also were on the outside of it on Bitcoin, but we can't foresee everything. And due to this uh, situation with FTX, if I look at Bitcoin and I go draw in a primary downtrend, okay? We just go on our peaks here, Okay. We, we have made it out, but we're not above the 200. We're kind of hovering right on this line, which is basically whales holding on or accumulating more holding the line. A lot of retail is out of the market, and that's very normal for a bear market or a recession. And again, in 2007 and 8, all the way through 13, we had a four or five year recession, but we bottomed three years earlier in the stock market. Remember, the stock market goes first. It also comes back first. So after the stock market will be things like the real estate market, the credit market, okay, the bankruptcies, the layoffs, the foreclosures. But by the time all that is going on, which is starting now, the stock market will come back. Now we do have to pay attention to decelerating earnings. That's all part of the process and the phases, not the market cycles or phases where you have phase one, two, three, four, but you have a acceleration phase and a deceleration phase within each stock or crypto sector or industry group and there will be favored sectors favored industry groups and there will be leaders that emerge out of phase four into phase one and one of the first things to notice that is when the price action goes above the 200 so <clears throat> bitcoin everybody's like well why aren't you trading well i'm i'm not really trading right now with the because i normally trade crypto and I'm not, I don't really want to trade crypto right now until I know more about what's going on with FTX, contagion, is there more chips to fall, I want to get more data, I don't want to be caught off guard. Plus, as far as my HODL, I have a, a lot of crypto and I have a lot of stocks already, So, I'm, and I like what I have. As far as the stocks, it's exactly what I just said. I already made my decision of what to buy over in here, I waited for the right moment, I called it on the perfect day, and I bought. Just like, just like I told everybody we were going to come down before we did, and I pulled all my money out before the crash started, like a week or three, four or five days before the crash started. So, <clears throat> you know, I give you my honest honest assessment, and it's, it's why I'm good at this and, you know, I've done very well for myself. But, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to buy up here. I already bought down here. And, you know, the only way that I would sell those is if I really think it's going to come down, I'd just take my profits and rebuy them again. 
but I'm not going to add to anything unless it were to come way down. I will add if it goes up, like if it broke out from here, I had planned on buying more and scaling in, averaging up, okay, instead of averaging down. So you want to get rid of your losers and you want to get the weeds out of your garden and you want to put that money uh, after uh, winners. You know, you want to get rid of the bad. You don't want to put good money after bad losing positions. You want to cut your losing positions and you want to get that money into your winners. Okay. And so that's what I intended to do, but I'm in a holding pattern because I'm also waiting on the data to come out from the fed. So let's just take a peek real quick and see what's going on with the spy. So on the spy, this is your primary downtrend, right? And you can just see simply it is making lower highs, lower highs, and again, lower highs. Now, last time I had made a stock video about a week ago, you know, my hope was we were, we were actually under the 200 and we were approaching and I said, man, it'd be, if we could get above that 200 and break that primary downtrend, we're really looking good. And they should probably follow the Dow because the Dow is a leading indicator. And the next would be the SPY and then would be the NASDAQ and then the Russell. But it looks like it's literally rejecting right off the 200 and falling out of its channel. Uh, we still have the Jedi green lights and the ribbon, but because we're under the pressure of the primary downtrend and the 200, you know, that is, you know, that is a cause for concern without a doubt. Now, is this go down? Let's see here if I can draw these in, catch up for us a little bit. Yeah, it came right up to it. Look at that. And then rejected and fell out. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're definitely gonna have to watch that. It might come and retest this support right here at 3,884 and bounce. And that might just happen right around the time of the CPI data. Again, if CPI data comes down, that's two months in a row. Markets are forward looking. Big money is trying to get their money in. They want to for the long hold. Us as retail, all we can do is be ready for that pivot, get our money in and let them lift us up. And that's how you do it, okay? Let's look at uh, the NASDAQ real quick. Okay, so the NASDAQ is the tech sector. Now, tech likes to go up when inflation goes down. So if the inflation read uh, comes down on the 13th, well, you can expect tech and big tech to go up fiercely. You can see a lot of indecision, a lot of choppiness, a lot of sideways action. You got reverse head and shoulders. You got lower lows turning into higher lows, back to lower lows, Wyckoff Springs, you know, to retesting multiple times on. So this support right here looks like it's, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good little support because it's tested it one, two, three, four, and now five times. So yeah, that's just telling me that the market is kind of waiting to get the data. And right now there's the fear is based on off data dependent information, okay? Fear fed news and data like the ISM services and, you know, of course your treasury yield inversions and, you know, what's gonna happen with things like oil and, you know, you just gotta keep an eye on the dollar and, and these other things, you know? So this right here is just telling me indecision, but essentially if you look at it, it's slowly going up, but I mean, it's probably hard to feel that with so much so much razor blade jagged, you know, sharp edges moving back and forth. I mean, um, but I tell you what, if tech comes down, excuse me, if inflation comes down, this tech will go up and it'll be a really, really good thing. So, you know, I know people are so worried. Oh, we had a lot of jobs and <laughs> look, guys, you got to have conviction. You want to buy these double bottoms. Presidents will come and go. Inflation will eventually come down. You know, the pandemic passed. Like a lot of the stuff is gone. You're at the 50 yard line. You're in the darkest part of the tunnel. You've already gone through the storm. You're finally starting to see the sun come out behind the clouds. Just know it's still going to be a long journey to get back to your port or to land, okay, or through the tunnel. So um, as long as it took to come down this far, it's probably going to take that long to come up and it, it'll go up more. It'll just go up slowly. And again, I want to remind you that those that were smart bought the bottom in 2009, even though all of retail scattered and didn't come back till 2013 or even 2014. Okay. So 
That's why we want to teach you at the wheelhouse how to identify the pivots, understand tops and bottoms, entries and exits, and if investing, where to accumulate. And there's a lot of tools that we offer inside of our Discord and our chart settings that help you with that, such as uh, map books and um, bullish order blocks and things of that nature. So uh, now the Russell and the NASDAQ are really fun to trade, and especially when they're in a bull run, but just look at the Russell. I mean, really low beaten down prices, but rejecting off the 200 and the primary downtrend as well. So yeah, I mean, I think what I'm doing is probably the right thing to do right now, and that's just wait. You know, just wait for the data. And that's why I've been focusing on my YouTube on learning graphic design and editing and all this different stuff that I've been doing lately. I basically learned like four new trade skills that I could use as a career if I ever wanted um, as a business. You know, just, just took the last month to learn all that stuff. And you can see, you know, what I learned in the last four videos. But this stuff... I've already known how to do for many, many years, starting uh, around 2004 and got real deep into it in 2014 and uh, mainly technicals is, is my thing. So, you know, right now I'm just seeing choppiness, sideways, indecision, data dependent, fed fear, BS as usual, and a lot of, you know, catalysts that keep moving us uh, up and down, up and down. And it's, it's very like, knee jerk reaction kind of, kind of action. So. It's hard to hodl. The best thing to do is just buy it low, get it out of your mind, know that what you're buying is good. Oh, I like cybersecurity. CrowdStrike just came down. They had a bad earnings. It's a deceleration, but cybersecurity will always be needed. Tesla at the beginning of the EV revolution. Okay, they're leading the pack. You know, companies like Disney. Okay, they just brought back Bob Iger. Okay, got rid of Bob Chapek. Bob Iger got the deal, the rights with LucasArts, got the Marvel deal. They got parks. They have not just parks, but they have the theme parks in multiple countries and multiple continents. And they have real estate and they have uh, cruise lines and they have Pixar and they have animation teams and movie stars and movies. And I mean, if you're looking for media and entertainment, Disney's a good one, you know. NVIDIA chips are always going to be needed. They're going to be needed for your iPads, your cell phones, your cars. So, you know, buy them low and hold and have conviction and make smart moves. Um, but know that it's going to be a long journey uh, back. So let's take a look at some stocks and see what the heck is going on. I'm going to look at some cryptos too. So this is drip and I think it's best we look at dailies and hourlies. Okay, so drip is a bet that oil will come down and it's pretty much just bottoming so without even looking at the oil i can tell it's uh oil must be coming down this is starting to come up and you can see it right there on the hourly it's clear as day from green or excuse me from pink to green it's pivoting and going up and above the spxs is one that i have it's a short for the spy and it's also got the jedi green lights and price action above its 200 on the hourly so yeah, I mean, you can just see it though. It's indecision. I mean, we're kind of going sideways. And one of my biggest fears as a trader or market participant is, you know, like a lost decade or just sideways action for many, many years. I mean, that's just horrible. Um, you know, we want things to be going up or to be going down. Uh, it's just much better because sideways is choppy and you tend to lose money in sideways action. So uh, we'll just go down the list. Um, you know, most stuff's red. And so let's look at Shiba, Shiba's crypto. We're on the daily. It's kind of just going sideways, not doing too much. If I back it up to the hourly, big FTX drop, kind of trying to hold and it's kind of found its little zone, uh, slowly climbing, nothing too great. Let's look at Sushi Swap. Same thing, bottoming, holding. It looks like seller exhaustion to me. Um, here you can see the FTX, a perfect bounce off an old support and it's just trying to roll up, but it's definitely, you know, had some pain recently in last, last, what am I on the hourly? So these are all hours. So this is yeah, like a last day or so, but it also looks like it's turning the corner on the indicators. Like it's about to start going in the other direction. <clears throat> all right. Chili's Chili's been beaten up. I mean, it was doing good during the the um you know the world cup but i mean it kind of fell off the map didn't it 
So yeah, on the hourly, not really showing too much strength. The daily kind of falling below. I mean, everything looks like it's just like waiting for that inflation. And I've been saying that over and over and over in my videos and in my Discord. And that's why I haven't been trading. And I know a lot of people want technical analysis videos, but I kind of cleared it up previously and said, hey, this is what's happening. And we're not going to really know until we get that next CPI read. If it comes in bad, markets are going to fall. If it comes in good, meaning inflation is going lower, and that's going to inspire the Fed to be more dovish, well, you better believe the market is forward looking. And those big guys with a lot of money that pulled out, they're looking to get that money in for the long time horizon. They just need consistency with two good inflation reports taking down in a row. They get that, you're gonna see money going in and you're gonna wanna be in to let them push you up, okay? Now Doge, I covered in yesterday's video, um, you know, with Elon and Twitter and him uh, filing for crypto payments and some code being pulled off of the Twitter app on the backside for a possible Twitter coin. And, uh, you know, there's probably multiple cryptos that would be used for the ecosystem on Twitter for payments and processing. And I'm sure Doge will be part of that. So Doge is actually above the 200 Jedi green lights. And that's what phase one looks like when you're above the 200. So Doge is actually looking better um, so far on the list. <laughs> Bitcoin's above 17. This was the range from 16.7 to 16.2. It got stuck in this range for a bit. It broke out. It has held on the hourly. It is bouncing or trying to bounce off the 200. If I look at it on the daily though. I mean, it's like what we talked about. We just, you know, it was 17.6. Then we rolled at 19,000 area for 45 days. FTX happened. We fell below, went all the way to like 15.5 and now we're back to 17 and it is what it is you know i think you know really all that's holding that together is large whale wallets and um the movements that you see is trader volume but the growth in the industry and the adoption is certainly going in the right direction we're just in a bear market and a lot of retail is gone uh, but when there is momentum momentum breeds momentum so uh these are good times if you have high conviction um you know to accumulate ethereum it's kind of been at this level for you know a while obviously it went a little lower over here around 1100 but you know for about a week it's been around this 1250 1280 area and um that's just what's going on it is out of its primary downtrend it's below its 200 again i think a lot of people think like me uh that we just need to wait for more data and figure out what's going on with the contagion on the ftx situation now, Matic, uh, I noticed in my portfolio, has picked up some steam. And let's look at the one hour. Yeah, so we got a little bit of a bump here. We finally, you know, we got rejected on the 200. We kind of pulled through it, pushed through it, and we're kind of just bouncing. This blue circle means false break out, though. So that means that if you see this, it's saying that soon, and it's already showing that, that that's going to be false and it's going to come down. So that's not good either. Um, but I do like Matic and I have no intention to sell it. Same thing with Avalanche, guys. I um, wish I could tell you more. I know you guys want me to do a TA video, but I mean, everything I said kind of stands. Like, we just got to wait for this information. There's two things you got to pay attention to when it comes to the crypto and stock market. One is the data dependent information on inflation. Is it going to come down? If it comes down, it's the second report. The second report gives consistency and big money is forward looking. Therefore, they will put their money in if headline and core come down on December 13th. For crypto, the situation is following the developing story on Sam Bankman Fried and FTX and trying to figure out uh, if there's going to be more contagion and if it's going to go from Main Street to Wall Street or how deep that contagion goes. Um, I don't think all the chips have fallen. I don't think everybody's come out in the headlines yet. I think people are scrambling for cash behind the scenes and they've been affected by this FTX situation uh, all the way down to the little guy, all the way to the big guy. And I think that there's stuff going on behind the scenes that has people uh, waiting like myself for more information. So, you know, again, find the ones that you really like. And these are great um you know, they're low numbers to either think about accumulating or add to your position. 
I don't want to, you know, say, hey, add your position on something in the middle. You want to identify the supports and resistances and the bounces and whatnot. But what we're looking at here is chain link and chain links, one of my favorites. And I want to do a video on chain link. This was a big support down here, five dollars and 30 cents or so. And, you know, you can see that it's rolled up. It's fading a little bit, but it is up more. I mean, it's up about a dollar fifty from where it was. I don't know. Three, three weeks ago or something, but really it's just a bottoming process. And these, these, these charts that look like this, it's, it takes about six months. Okay. And we're about five months into it right now. So it's kind of doing what it's supposed to be doing. It sucks that it's a waiting period, but you know, I'll tell you what, for me personally, I really like chain link. I want to do a whole video on chain link. Um, there, there's, so many things going on uh, that, are, that are positive with, with Chainlink in particular um, for the financial system and even with the uh, proof of work or excuse me, with um, proof of reserves uh, where you can just use the Chainlink um, system and you can verify proof of reserves uh, for all these exchanges and whatnot. There's just so many good things going on. Uh, ape coins come up. It looks like ape coins come up. It fell pretty savage. Uh, it looks like it's just getting the Jedi green light. So that's kind of cool. Let's look at the hourly. Yeah. So apes had some movement. You can see the pivot. There's the FTX. This is involved with NFTs and it pushed through the 200s, bounced off it twice and it's trying to make a little move. But again, I see indecision. Solana, we all know what happened with Solana. I mean, it's Sam Bankman Freeman, what a joke, dude. This guy's such. Mm. Uh, I, I gotta be careful what I say, uh, but I think you know how I feel about this douche canoe. Um, so yeah, it's it's poor Solana, you know. I feel bad for those guys get so caught up in this, but you can see, I mean, the FTX, you know, finally did pivot and bounce right off of its support, and it's just kind of going sideways. Okay. Tesla, um, Tesla looks like it's been taking a beating, probably due to this um, Apple news and news out of China. So yeah, I mean, on the daily, these are definitely lower highs. I mean, Tesla held up. You know, I don't know if you could take it from there. Maybe a more like look at it like that. And this was just a spoof breakout. But yeah, I mean, Tesla's really low right now at 179. What's the what's the um, trailing 12 month look like on that? Let's see. So we're still at 56 on the PE, which is you know relatively high considering. But remember, with PE, a lot of people are like, oh, when the PE is low, it's I want to buy it, and I understand why. Uh, but also when the PE is low, there's a reason. It's because they've already decelerated on earnings and they haven't done anything good with products or services or deliveries or margins or sales or revenue or growth or maybe their CEO is not performing. So it's the ones that have the high PE that are in more demand and that's where you get more price action. Um, so if you're looking for Tesla, well, the PE is lower than it was or NVIDIA or some of these other ones and um, you know, you might find a happy medium, but I'll tell you this, Tesla, they have their own charging network. They're building, uh, tunnels underground to help with the traffic issues. And those will be retrofit, uh, for Tesla vehicles. And with him buying the Twitter app and, you know, having the everything app through X and, you know, having the charging stations and full charging network and full self-driving. I mean, it's a great investment if you're looking long term. OK, so Tesla's down. Um, it's definitely down. DocuSign, I mean, it's down. It's a 10 bagger back to the top. I mean, it just none of these have really done much since I've done a, a video. And that's because we're in the darkest part of the tunnel. We're on the 50 yard line. We're just now getting out of the storm, barely seeing sun come out of the clouds. And we won't know if we're going to see all the sun come out of the clouds until we get to December 13th. If that inflation goes way up, I mean, those dark clouds are going to come back. And if it comes down, the clouds are going to move and the sky is going to get sunny really fast. Everything is data dependent on, you know, the Fed's tone and temperature and um, the data that comes out. Okay. So PayPal, <clears throat> 
PayPal is just kind of hovering. It's just way down here. Um, yeah, I mean, that looks like it got dirty in the last couple of days. Microsoft still at that 245 support. <clears throat> Netflix above 300. Okay, Netflix is still holding. They had a good earnings. You know, we're, Netflix. Netflix is a great example of... When you go into a bear market and you're only technically driven and you're just trading, okay? And then you go through a decelerating phase on earnings and then you come out with a good earnings and you pivot and you, you find a bottom and you bounce. And because they had such a great earnings, I mean, they had a great earnings. So you can see that we're not just technically driven, we're fundamentally driven. And Netflix is a prime example of that it is actually in a bull run it's above the 200 okay it has the jedi green lights and it's being driven by those really good earnings so you can simply see that as a bottom and and a bounce and this is you know from here to here is months but it's going in the right direction and that is emerging as a leader okay google still down below 100 i mean look at this jesus yeah, it's just kind of hanging out. Apple, 142. All these numbers just, yeah, you just see the sideways action. All these numbers just look like they were like two, three weeks ago to me. Square, 61, still right at that support that it was all the way back in 2017. Over here, the top of this one, okay? And then here is the bottom of 2018, the bear market. And it retested, and it retested. And here's COVID, and it here's the bull run. And it retested, 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 and it's still just right there. Everything is just waiting, guys, for this data, okay? And and that's why I haven't been doing a lot of technical videos. Technical analysis is my favorite. I'm really good at it. Um, and I'm always here to help you guys. But I've also been in the markets a long time, and I also know how to read this stuff. And I also just knew nothing's really going to be moving until we get that second read okay and if it comes down it's the market's going to like it a lot and they're going to like it a lot because it's showing that all the work the fed has been doing with the aggressive rate hikes is now peaking inflation's peaking the rate hikes are peaking you know we're kind of at the middle point and it's going to signal that and that's the signal that smart money needs okay amazon Looks like it's just gotten tore back. Um, NVIDIA, you know, NVIDIA looks like it's bouncing, but it's at the 200. So you want to be careful. Again, even though the prices are so good at 108 over here, it's really about getting above that 200. You got to think of the 200 as the, the, the mean, okay? The reversion to the mean. Above is, excuse me, my mouse is tripping out. Above the, is bullish and below is bearish, okay? Disney, great prices at 92. I prefer 74, but hey, it's Disney. And if you're in it for the long haul, they're going to be fine. They're not going bankrupt. That's what you should be thinking about first if you're investing. Your first question should be, will they go bankrupt? So if Disney is the one that you're thinking about, the answer is no. So therefore, it makes the list. At least filter out the ones that could go bankrupt and keep the ones that won't and then start making your selection process from there, you know. CrowdStrike's really low. I actually need to buy more of this, but um, I got to figure out exactly where to do it, which it could be right in here because this is a peak over here and a pivot low here, and the price action is there. So it might be a good time for me to average um, some more shares. I think I'll maybe do that tomorrow because um, I bought my, my price is much higher. This one's red for me, but cybersecurity is not going anywhere and use the fear and the deceleration to your advantage if you have high conviction and you know the industry group is going to go the distance which CrowdStrike will okay just like AMD AMD is going to go the distance okay look it's already kind of showing a little pivot but again until it's above that 200 you really you know you can't know um yeah, we're just at the same place we kind of were. I wish I could give you more, but everything that I said in this video is true. Just wait for that data to come out. Use the fear to your advantage. Wait for yourself to get above uh, the 200 to enter phase one out of phase four. Work on your watch list, you know. Um, don't buy high when it's coming down. Wait for it to come down and bounce, okay? Buy into momentum if you're going to average down. And just wait for that data on the stock market, okay? And just wait for 
the news to come out on the crypto stuff and then make your decisions on buying then, okay? But put together your watch list and know what you want and create your filters and just know it's gonna be a long ride back up to the top, um, at least as long as it took to come down. So I'm gonna end it there. My name's Chris, welcome to the wheelhouse. Hit that subscribe below the video and who loves you, baby? Thank <laughs> you.